You are watching Christ's Commission Fellowship. Changing lives for eternity. This morning, I want us to start a new series. Our new series is called One Thing, The One Thing. For the next month, for this month, we will discuss one thing, the one thing. What do we mean by one thing, the one thing? For example, in the Bible, the one thing is clearly explained. The one thing is something that is most important for you. What is the one thing that you really value the most? What is the one thing that has given you your highest priority? What is that one thing? Do you know your one thing? For example, in the Bible, you have David. <clears throat> David said, one thing I've asked from the Lord. What is that one thing? I'm going to discuss that in the coming weeks. Paul, the Apostle Paul said, this one thing I do. Notice, this one thing I do. Now, Paul is doing many things, but he's saying this one thing I do, most important. And Mary of Bethany, Jesus said, only one thing is necessary. Now, the three of those one thing have something in common. What is the common theme? It's all about God, intimacy with God. See, God wants you to know Him. Let's read this together. Jeremiah 9, together. Thus says the Lord, let not a wise man boast of his wisdom. In other words, for some people, their one thing is knowledge. Their one thing is Bible study. They want to accumulate knowledge. Uh-uh. Let not the mighty man boast of his might. For some people, it's about power. It's about position. That's their one thing. Uh-uh. The Bible says that should not be your priority. Let not a rich man boast of his riches. For some people, it's all about money. They boast about money. That's their one thing, money. God says, uh-uh, that should not be your one thing. What should be your one thing? But let him who boasts, boast of this. Everybody read. That he understands and knows me. You see, God wants you to know him. Whatever it is, your one thing should be intimacy with God. You have to know the Lord. That is, to me, the one thing that I want all of us to learn for the year 2020, the one thing. For example, in John chapter 17, why is this so important? Everybody read together. Jesus is saying, this is eternal life. That they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you have sent. You see, many people think eternal life is joining a church. You join CCF. Uh -uh. The Bible is not saying you join CCF. The Bible is not saying you join a small group. The Bible is not saying you do this, you do that. No, no. The Bible says, what is eternal life? Can I tell you what is eternal life? Let's read. This is eternal life, that they may know. The word know is from this amazing Greek word, ginosko. Ginosko is used to describe intimacy. It is describing the relationship of a husband and a wife, even the sexual act itself. Intimacy. You, you really know the Lord. Can I tell you, you will never be assured of salvation until you know the Lord, until you know who is Jesus. Let me explain to you why this is the most important. It impacts your entire life. Let me give an example. If you know God, what will happen to you? How many of you have problems today? You have financial problems. Raise your hand. Emotional problems. Relationship problems. You have problems. Raise your hands. All right. How many of you have loved ones 
who have problems. And because your loved ones have problems, they share with you and you are therefore affected. You are bothered. You have loved ones who are having problems. Raise your hands. Now, that we are becoming realistic, how will knowing God impact the way you deal with problems? For example, in our discipleship group, this year, I mean, uh, last year, last quarter, it was the hardest time for our group because we have many members that are afflicted. Their loved ones are afflicted with cancer. A daughter with cancer, a wife underwent operation, another wife, cancer, another pastor's wife, cancer, a member, cancer, and now in the States. In other words, we are afflicted. Our members have a lot of problems. And I have to be honest with you, when I hear their problems, it affects me. So how do I deal with it? It affects all of us. And the reason why all of us are able to be rested, to be at peace in spite of problems is because we know there's a God who loves us. There's a God who is in control. And let me tell you something. If your problem is bigger than God, you really have a problem. But if your God is bigger than your problem, then your problem is less. Amen? Yes or no? Now, many of you have all kinds of problems, relationship problems, financial problems. I'm not saying deny them, but I'm saying the solution to be dealing with problems is know God. If you know God, you will know His ways. You will know how to deal with it. You will know what it means to trust Him. Let me give you an example. If you are single and you are tempted to have premarital sex, it's a real temptation today. Everyone is doing it. But you will not do it if you know God. Can I tell you why? Because if you know God, you will love Him. If you know God, you will obey Him. If you love God, submission to Him is not a problem. Because you love God. If you know God, you will trust Him. You see, the knowledge of God is the most important thing. It affects everything you do. From business practices, if you are tempted to cheat, you are tempted to compromise, you are tempted not to pay taxes, if you know your God, you will approach your problems differently. Why? You know Him. And I believe this topic is so crucial. So this morning, if you don't mind, I have a question to ask you. What is your one thing for this year? What is your one thing? Let me tell you why this one thing is so crucial. We all make New Year's resolutions. How many of you made New Year's resolutions? Raise your hands. I noticed something. The older you get, the less New Year's resolution you do. You know why? Because you have discovered New Year's resolutions are seldom Accomplished. Yes or no? In fact, by the end of January, by the time it is Valentine's, by February, 90% of people have forgotten their New Year's resolution. You know why? You have given up. You overestimate the power of your will. You overestimate the power of your will. I have discovered something and I want to recommend to everybody. If you have time, you read this book, Atomic Habits. This book tells you the wisdom of developing good habits because it is good habits that will help you succeed. It is not goals. It is not New Year's resolution. And that is why in CCF, we have prayer and fasting. These are systems we have made in place. I'm going to discuss these systems in the next three weeks. In the meantime, what is the topic today? What is your one thing? What is your one thing? Can I suggest? I like what St. Augustine said. 
To fall in love with God is the greatest of all romance. To seek Him, the greatest adventure. To find Him, the greatest human achievement. Your one thing should be God-centered. To know Him, to be intimate with Him. This morning, I want to share with you the one thing of a particular person. Her name is Mary. There are many Marys in the Bible. You have Mary, the mother of Jesus. You have Mary Magdalene, where seven demons were cast out. This Mary Magdalene was the first to witness the empty tomb. You have other Mary, the mother of James. You have other Mary, the mother of John Mark. You have six Marys in the Bible. But today, I'll discuss with you one particular Mary, the Mary of Bethany. This is the Mary who is the sister of Lazarus, and her sister was Martha. Jesus loved this family. Jesus would visit their home. So are you ready to discuss the one thing of the Mary of Bethany? What is her one thing? Are you ready? All right, let's read. <clears throat> Together. Now, as they were traveling along, he entered the village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. The village is the village of Bethany, a few miles away from Jerusalem. Continue reading. Together, ready, go. What was Mary doing? Seated at the feet of Jesus. Why? Normal woman and normal girl will not sit at the feet of a man. Much more a rabbi. Mary sat in front of Jesus. For what purpose? I want you to imagine the picture. Why was Mary so eager to sit in front at the feet of Jesus? The Bible says to listen to his word. Here is what enters my mind. Mary wanted focus. She focused on Jesus. Sitting at the feet of Jesus reminds me of intimacy. Mary wanted to be intimate with the Lord. Mary wanted to learn. Mary worshipped Jesus. Are we clear? That's the idea of sitting at the feet of Jesus. What was Martha doing? Martha was distracted. She was affected with all her preparations. She came up to him. Can you imagine? Just imagine. Here was Mary sitting, Jesus speaking, and then somebody stopped the entire Bible lesson. Martha was complaining. She came to him, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone? Tell her to help me. Can you see the picture? Martha is doing something good. She's serving. She's busy. Except she had a problem. She was not happy. She was complaining. Can you imagine serving the Lord, yet you are not happy? You are grumbling. You are complaining. Why? Because Mary, her sister, left. In other words, Mary was helping Martha and then when Jesus came, when Jesus began to teach, Mary stopped doing what Martha was doing. She decided to sit at the feet of Jesus. How did Jesus reply to Martha? Did Jesus say, Martha, you are correct. Mary is lazy. Mary, go back and serve. Is that what Jesus said? What did Jesus say? Amazing. Jesus said, the Lord answered and said to her, 
Martha, Martha. Here is a description of love. When the Bible repeats something, it is out of love. Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered about so many things. But only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Everybody, point your finger like this. Upward. Everybody. Higher. One thing. Point. Upward. Not two finger. One. Yes, one. Okay. And the right finger, okay? The right finger. One. What is your one thing? According to Jesus, Mary made a choice. What is Mary's one thing? What? To sit at the feet of Jesus. What does it mean to sit at the feet of Jesus? If you are tired, bring down your hand. Okay, bring down your hand. My message today is so simple. Pursue the one thing. What is that one thing? Sit at the feet of Jesus. Can you turn your neighbor? Tell your neighbor, sit at the feet of Jesus. What does that mean? Jesus is not saying, Martha, what you are doing is bad. Uh -uh. It's important. We have Martha's. But what is more important to Jesus is not what you do for Him. It's your relationship with Him. Let me repeat. Because Jesus is focused on your being, who you really are. If you have a relationship with Jesus, the doing will follow. But you can be so busy doing something and miss out on the most important thing, the presence of Jesus. What do I mean? Imagine sitting at the feet of Jesus. What are the implications? Let me repeat. Focus. Intimacy. You want to know Jesus, to listen to Him. You want to worship Him. Let me give you an example of why it is important to sit at the feet of Jesus. You know why? When you don't sit at the feet of Jesus, this is what will happen to you. Martha was distracted. There will be distraction with all her preparations. Can you imagine preparing food for how many people? When Jesus went to the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, how many went with Jesus? How many? Excuse me. You don't know how many? Can I guess? Jesus always travel with who? With the 12 disciples. So you can be sure there were at least 12 men plus Jesus, plus Lazarus, plus Mary and Martha. How many? Can you, have you tried preparing food for 16 people? It is a chore. It's not easy. By the way, my wife has become an expert in preparing food, especially this Christmas. Let me tell you why. We have five wonderful children, all happily married. So five times two is ten. Plus all their children. I have 20 grandchildren. Imagine every meal you must prepare for how many people? Ten adults, 20 children, plus their yayas. My goodness, it's a lot of work. So... Martha was busy, was distracted. But notice, what was Martha's problem? If you don't sit at the feet of Jesus, you are going to burn out. You are going to serve God with the wrong attitude. The problem with Martha is not her serving. It's her priorities. She has forgotten how to serve God with joy. When you serve God as a duty, no longer a delight, you have a problem. You need to sit at the feet of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, sit at the feet of Jesus. If not, 
this was going to happen. Complaining. Do you not care my sister has left me? In other words, you begin to focus on people. Let me repeat. If you don't sit at the feet of Jesus, you will lose sight of the real reasons, the real purpose of why we are serving God. It's not about people. You are not there to impress the Lord how well you can cook. You are not there to impress the twelve. You need to learn to sit at the feet of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, sit at the feet of Jesus. Tell them. Now, what does it mean? It means you want to listen. You want to... It's intimacy. Notice. Together. The Lord answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and bothered. Let me tell you, what makes you worry? What causes anxiety? Can I tell you? Many reasons. When you focus on circumstances, when you focus on problems, you worry. When you focus on trying to control people, you worry. What causes worry? What causes being bothered? When you don't sit at the feet of Jesus, you and I need to focus on the Lord. Let me explain to you why you need to focus on the Lord. Let's read this together, everybody. If you fix your eyes on people, you'll be bothered. If you fix your eyes on circumstances, you get worried. Remember this saying, if you look at the world, you become afraid. If you look at your own self, you can become depressed. But if you look at God, you'll be at rest. Many of us, we focus our eyes on others. You are bothered. You need to learn to sit at the feet of Jesus. When I'm bothered, when I'm troubled, and the truth is, we have lots of problems, especially last few weeks. Loved ones, CCF, and I'm bothered. Can I tell you what helped me? When I sit at the feet of Jesus. I fix my eyes on Him. What does it mean to fix your eyes on Jesus? What does it mean to sit at the feet of Jesus? You pray. Read this. Together. Again. Read together. Ready? Go. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, the picture is what? Intimacy. You focus on Him. You tell Him your problems. Be anxious for nothing. The truth is, you have problems, I have problems. God is saying, allow me to minister to you. You see, we, you and I, we like to serve God all the time. Praise God. But God is telling Martha, be like Mary. Mary was seated at the feet of Jesus, listening to the Word of God. Because you and I need to be refreshed in our soul. You need to learn to allow God to minister to you. And how do you do that? When you learn to pray, when you learn to listen, be anxious for nothing. And you know what God promised you? If you commit to Him everything in prayer, notice by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. When you learn to trust Him, to give thanks, to focus on Him, the truth is this. You know how I pray? I say, Lord, I do not know why you are allowing this problem to happen. I do not know why this happened, but I trust you. I commit this problem into your hand. What is the promise? Everybody read. And the... Uh, peace of God which surpasses all comprehension. In other words, I don't understand. But the truth is this. 
the peace of God will settle in my soul. And I experience restedness. That's what the Bible says. And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension. You don't understand this. Psychologists cannot explain this. How the power of prayer, how intimacy with God can help people sleep well at night. That's the promise. Shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. See, God promise, if you learn to sit at the feet of Jesus, you'll have peace. The Bible tells us, let's read this together. Prayer is a two-way conversation. The most important part is listening to God. Listening to Him is far more important than giving Him your ideas. Can I tell you, the older I get, the more I realize the true secret of prayer, true prayer is not me telling God what to do. For me, prayer is listening to God. And that's why I want you to understand in CCF, we have devised certain system to help you become all that God wants you to be. Let me explain to you the importance of system. To have a goal is one thing. Goal does not guarantee success. Every basketball team at the beginning of the year will like to be the champion. The difference is in the system. What do you mean? You see, a goal does not necessarily mean you will accomplish it. All of us have goals. But what God is teaching me is called developing a system. It's called habits. You develop habit little by little. For example, I'm encouraging you, come starting tomorrow night. Monday to Saturday, it's our system of helping us sit at the feet of Jesus. You listen to Him. Friends, most of us have never learned how to listen to God. God is speaking, but you don't hear Him. Be honest with me. How many of you have a personal encounter that you know for a fact that God has spoken to you? Raise your hands. Praise God, many of you. Some of you have not raised your hand. Do you know how sad it is to be a child of God and never experience God the Father speaking to you? Can I tell you why? You have not learned to sit at the feet of Jesus. To sit at the feet of Jesus is to listen to Him intentionally. I have a system. Let me tell you my system. When I wake up in the morning, the moment I brush my teeth, that's my system. I brush my teeth. I tell myself I'm not going to sleep again because I brush my teeth. It's a system. And then what I do, I kneel down. I begin to pray. It's a system. And after spending time with God, I begin to do my exercise. I want my mind to be clear. So I begin to walk. And I walk with my cell phone open to YouTube. What? No, not YouTube. Bible apps. What is that Bible app? That famous Bible app? Ah, you version. I listen to the Bible. That's the ritual. I listen. And then after I walk, I hear the word of the Lord. And what hit me, when I go back to my room, I put up my computer, I type in the verses that God spoke to me. I go back to the Bible. It's a system I've developed. The problem is this. Most of you focus on the goal, but you fail in your system. Let me give you another example of system. This girl wanted to lose weight. Her goal is to lose weight. 
but she cannot lose weight. Every time, coffee break, she goes down to the, her office cafeteria and she buys cookies and donuts. You see, it's her system. What system? All of you have a system. All of you have a habit. Her habit is off coffee break. I go down to the coffee shop and I'll be with my friends and I buy cookies. That's her habit. She decided to change her habit. During coffee break, I will no longer go to the cafeteria. I'll go outside my office and take a walk. And by doing that, after one week, her desire for cookies, for donuts, is gone. Why? Because she changed her environment. She changed her system. We overestimate the power of the will. I, have, I don't have a strong will. But God has given us system. So how do I listen to God? On Sunday, when I come on worship service, I listen to God's word. God speaks to me. In small group, when I hear them discussing the Bible, I discuss with them, sometimes God will speak to me through the small group. When I am, listen to me. When I'm alone, having my quiet time, God speaks to me. Sometimes when I sleep at night, I dream. And sometimes God speaks to me through dreams. Sometimes I'm awake and God gives me a vision. Now, God speaks to us in various ways. No one is exactly the same. But you got to check God's message with the Word of God. You see, when I hear from God, I will confirm it through the Word of God. Because God's voice will never contradict His Word. And that's why it is important to be at the feet of Jesus, listening to God's Word. So for me, it's a habit. And my friend, you overestimate the power of dramatic events. For example, which one is more effective? Three hours of gym once a week versus 15 minutes a day of simple exercise. Which one is more effective? You see, many people think it's going to the gym. No. The problem with small things, you think it is useless. Like reading the Bible, 10, 15 minutes a day. Spending quiet time with the Lord, 10, 15 minutes a day. Memorizing verses, one verse a week. It seems like it's not doing anything. But listen, once you compound the effect, after one year, after two years, the effect is dramatic. We have a system. God has given us a system. A small group, prayer and fasting, Sunday service. It's a system. While it may not affect you immediately, in the long run, it will impact your life. So what I'd like you to do for this coming year, every day, are you listening to me? Develop, beginning, 10, 15 minutes of listening to the Lord personal, quiet time. Are we communicating? You may not see any difference, but I guarantee you, after one year, after two years, you will see the effect. I look at my life. I look at my wife's life. You see, for many years, the Lord has touched my heart 50 years ago. For over 50 years, God has helped me develop certain system in my life. It's simple, nothing dramatic, but the impact is there. But it is not seen immediately. So for the next three weeks, I'm going to teach you developing good habits through system. Are you ready? Today, what are we learning one thing. What is that one thing? Sit at the feet of Jesus. That's the one thing. 
and listen to the Lord. So next week, we'll be here every night to sit at the feet of Jesus to listen. I can safely say on the authority of all that is revealed in the Word of God that any man or woman on this earth who is born and turned off by worship is not ready for heaven. If you tell me sitting at the feet of Jesus is boring, I want to tell you something. Examine your relationship with God. Perhaps you don't know Him. You see, I'm always curious at why people come on Sunday. Everybody, listen to me. Why are you here on Sunday? My prayer is you are here on Sunday because you love the Lord. You love to worship Him. Amen? You are here to worship, not to take, to worship. And you make that a habit of coming to God once a week together with other believers to sing, to worship. I tell you, it may not make any difference one Sunday, two Sundays, but over a long period of time, it becomes a habit. It will change your life. For many years, my wife and I have practiced. We will always look for a place of worship on Sunday. People have asked me, why not the internet? Why not just online? My question to you is this. If I can go to a place where God's people are gathered to sing and worship, why will I not go there? If my purpose is just to hear a message, sure, internet. However, my purpose is worship. My purpose is to love the Lord and to express my love for the Lord through God's people. You see, when I come, I'm not just there to bless myself. I'm there to bless others. Amen? So you understand what's going on in your heart. You will never know what's going on in your heart if you don't learn to sit at the feet of Jesus. What's the message today? Sit at the feet of Jesus. It's worship. It's listening. It's intimacy. Sooner or later, there will be consequences. Remember, life is about choices. To sit at the feet of Jesus, according to Jesus, according to Him, it's a choice. Remember this? Let's read this verse one more time. Only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen. It's a choice. You've got to make a choice of what is important. For me, while serving God, being busy for God is important, what is more important is to sit at the feet of Jesus, worship, listening to Him. Let me tell you why. Because Worship, sitting at the feet of Jesus, the byproduct is serving Him. The byproduct of intimacy with God, if you love God, the byproduct is activities. If you focus on activities and you neglect your soul and you don't sit at the feet of Jesus, you will burn out. You begin to serve God with a bad attitude. I've seen people, they are angry with other believers. You know why? Because they are serving God, not because they, are, they began with sitting at the feet of Jesus. It's all activities. When you begin to serve God without sitting at His feet, you begin to serve Him in your own power, your own agenda, and that is not healthy. Can you imagine Martha serving God but getting angry at her sister, complaining to Jesus? Do you know some Christians who are like that? They serve God in anger because of other people. They want to control other people, how they should serve God. You see, you expect everybody to be like you. No. Sit at the feet of Jesus. Hear Him. He will tell you what to do. And you'll be rested. That's the amazing reality of pursue the one thing. What is our pursuit? Sit at the feet of Jesus. 
Now, there are consequences. At the end of the life of Jesus, before he would die, he came to Bethany one more time. He spent time with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they made him a supper there. Martha was serving. Praise God for Martha. She's always serving. That's her act of worship. But this time, she's no longer complaining. She is not complaining. Understand? Lazarus, this time, was one of those reclining. Lazarus was fellowshipping with Jesus. Understand? So how you relate to Jesus, all of us have our own ways. But notice the context of this story. Six days before he was to be crucified. This is right after Lazarus was raised from the dead. Can I tell you what happened? What is the chapter before John chapter 12? What's the chapter? Louder. What is chapter 11? It's about Lazarus. Jesus told the family, everybody read, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Now, let me ask you a question. Who in his right man? Who in his right mind? Who is an honest human being who will ever say, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. Who will ever say that? Unless it is true. Everybody read. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. You see, Mary, Martha, Lazarus experience the reality of who is Jesus. You see, if you know Jesus, your life will change. How you respond to problems, how you worship God will change. If you don't find it exciting to listen to Jesus, to study His Word, you need to ask yourself, do you really know Jesus. You see, Jesus made it so clear. According to Jesus, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they hear me, and they follow me. Are you a follower of Jesus? That's the evidence of wanting to sit at the feet of Jesus. You want to know Him. You want to listen to Him. Now, notice the next verse. Mary did something so crazy. Mary took a pound of very costly perfume of punard, anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. Now, what did Mary do? Mary did something that most normal women will never do. First of all, she got a very expensive perfume of punard. A scholar tells us this must be from India or China. It is very expensive. It is used in burial because the perfume is so strong to overcome the smell of death. This is worth one year's salary. How much is one year's salary today? If you talk about minimum salary in the Philippines, 15,000 pesos a month, more or less. In one year, 180,000 pesos. Will you use 180,000 pesos perfume and pour it on somebody? I don't think so. You see, this is probably the fortune, the inheritance of Mary, a lot of money. She did not use the perfume on Lazarus when he died, but she did it on Jesus while he is still alive. Why? Think about it. 
Why did Mary became so generous, so magnanimous, so lavish in her devotion to Jesus? Can I tell you? When you sit at the feet of Jesus, you develop a love relationship, you develop intimacy, you get to know who Jesus is when you sit at the feet of Jesus. And when you know who Jesus is, nothing is too precious for you to give to him. In contrast, look, what did she do? If you read the book of Mark, the book of Matthew, she poured the perfume on the head of Jesus all the way to the feet. She did something that normal woman will never do. She used her hair to wipe the feet of Jesus. You see, when you love Jesus, when you worship Jesus, you don't care about what other people will say because you are focused on Jesus. You love Jesus. That, my friend, is what Mary did. She focused on Jesus. She gave her best to Jesus. Of course, in contrast, you have Judas. Judas one of the 12 disciples who was intending to betray him said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii, 300 days salary, and given to poor people? You know, I realized something. Counterfeit Christians, they can sound spiritual. They speak so spiritual. Wow, let's help the poor. Let's give this money to the poor. You know what Jesus said? Well, before I tell you, look at what the Bible says. He said this not because he was concerned about the poor, but because he was a thief. And as he had the money box, he used to pilfer what was, put, what was put into it. Do you know why Judas did what he did? Think about it. Judas heard everything that Mary heard. Judah saw more than what Mary saw. Judas saw the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead. Judas heard the sermon of Jesus. And yet Judas was not a follower of Jesus. Judas was pretending. I believe Judas began well. But money was his number one. For Judas, one thing is money. And because Judas loved money more than he loved Jesus, he could never comprehend. Truth will not sink in. He was externally pretending to be a follower. You know what hit me? When you begin to compromise a small action and it becomes a habit of lying, a habit of sinning, a habit of cheating, a small thing will eventually lead to bigger things. Judas came blinded. He heard everything. He saw Lazarus raised from the dead. Judas, I'm sorry, Judas saw everything. Judas saw Jesus healing Lazarus, rising Lazarus from the dead. And yet Judas did not change. Why? The power of habit. Cheating a little here, cheating a little here, it hardens your heart. And that's my concern. There are some people here today, you have been attending CCF for the longest time. You have heard all my sermons. But it's possible. Your heart is still not affected by the gospel. You know what happened to Judas? Eventually, Judas betrayed Jesus. Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver is equivalent to three months' salary. For Judas, that is what Jesus is worth. Nothing. 30 pieces of silver. For Mary, Jesus is worth more than anything she could have afforded. For Jesus, for Mary, Jesus is precious. I will give my best to Jesus. 
For Judas, Jesus is not worth it. Why? He could never appreciate Jesus. When you are in sin, and sin has become a habit, I'm warning you, your heart becomes hardened. Your eyes become blind. You are not able to see the truth of Jesus. Why do you think there are many people today, you used to see them coming to worship, eventually they disappear. They neglect following Jesus. How is that possible? Very simple. When you don't know Jesus from the heart, you'll eventually deny him. Let me repeat. If you don't learn to sit at the feet of Jesus, be eager to know him, to seek after him, you will become, if you are not careful, a Judas. Now, there are some of us here, praise God, you are not a Judas. You are a Martha, always busy for the Lord. Martha. But you are serving God not out of delight, out of duty. Not good enough. You should be a Mary. Sit at the feet of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, sit at the feet of Jesus. You know what Jesus told Judas? Jesus said, let her alone. Judas, don't bother Mary so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Jesus is not saying don't take care of the poor, but he's saying, I am the most important being. I want relationship with you. You see, you and I can be so busy, but you know what Jesus wants? Your presence. Jesus is saying, I want your attention. I want a relationship. What you do for me is fine, but more than that, I want you. Sit at the feet of Jesus. Focus on him. What does it mean? Well, let me explain to you what does it mean that she kept it for the day of my burial. Jesus, the, the same idea in, Mark, in Matthew, same idea. Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you bother her? She has done a good deed to me. Amazing. Jesus never made this compliment to any of his other disciples except to Mary. She said, she has done a good thing for me. When you sit at the feet of Jesus, you will not only bless yourself, you bless Jesus. Jesus said, she has done a good thing for me. How precious is that? Notice the next verse. Jesus said, she has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. Is it possible that Mary was the only person who really understood that Jesus was going to suffer and die on the cross? You see, Jesus kept telling the disciples, I'm going to die. On the third day, I'll rise up again. But none of them really comp understood this. Is it possible that Mary understood this? She prepared Jesus for his death. Jesus was very appreciative. Jesus said, she did something good for me. My friend, you need to know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, how will you please him? For this year, the most important thing I want us to focus on, the one thing, sit at the feet of Jesus. Look at the promise of Jesus to Mary. Jesus promised him something amazing. Truly, I say to you, everybody read, wherever the gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be spoken of in memory of her. Ladies and gentlemen, I just did what Jesus said will happen. 
for eternity, Mary was given the privilege that wherever the gospel is preached, Mary will be remembered for what she has done. And Judas will be remembered for his betrayal. You know why? Because choices have consequences. Either you sit at the feet of Jesus, learn to love Him, learn to know Him. Or, or you will have His religion. Let's bow our heads and pray. If God has spoken to you, God is telling you for this year, prioritize. Make it the most important thing to sit at the feet of Jesus. And that's your desire. Will you stand up? Your priority this year, to sit at the feet of Jesus, to listen to Jesus, to focus on Jesus, to be intimate. Make this a habit. I encourage you, begin. 10, 15 minutes a day. Make it a habit. Develop a system of worshiping Jesus. Father God in heaven, I thank you for this group of men and women that they would desire to sit at your feet. Lord, as we listen to the music in a short while, help us to sit at your feet and to meditate on who you are, what you have done for us. I pray for everybody here that this year our priority will not just be doing things for you, but to allow you to minister to us, Lord, to enjoy your presence, to enjoy your company, to worship you, to listen to you. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen.